present with your church, Lord, as we respond to your call. Open our eyes to the downtrodden. Fill us with compassion for the plight of the alien, the refugee, and the immigrant. Lead us into ministries that help children and the homebound. Set us free to worship you as you choose, sharing bread with the hungry, homes with the homeless, sharing clothes with the naked, sharing hearts with our own kin. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those this day who are suffering, for ourselves and those we love, suffering through sickness, through loss, with doubt and living in fear, those suffering with loneliness, for those we name now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And hear us as we join together to pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Friends, I want to give you um, a couple of updates. Minerva Walters has um, moved to the rehab unit at Johnston Willis Hospital, uh, where she's undergoing occupational and physical therapy, uh, both for uh, her hip and recovery from the stroke that she had suffered uh, about two weeks ago. David Bailey is still in the hospital at St. Mary's, is hoping to come home in the next couple of days, but when he does, he will be in hospice care. And, um, and so he and Angela and the family are preparing for that. Uh, so keep them in, in your prayers. Uh, David loves to have visitors. Um, he's not much for talking on the telephone right now, uh, but he would love to see you. So I'm just, that's his request. And I'm passing it along to you. Okay. Um, as Richard prepares to present our offering this morning, friends, let us pray. God who gives all gifts, in this season we focus so much on giving gifts to one another. Help us, we pray, to remember what John the Baptist tells us is on your wish list. That we might bear fruit worthy of the season. Fruit of compassion. Fruit of sharing. Fruit by giving. So that others who have little will have enough. In response to you, we give, that our fruit might please you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Richard. Are we live, Turner? Okay. Hey, good morning to our online community. Welcome this morning to Trinity United Methodist Church. It is the third Sunday of Advent, December the 17th, and uh, we are continuing our journey this morning on making our way to Bethlehem, uh, making our way home to Christ, and we're glad that you're with us. We begin this morning with a reading from the prophet, uh, as we have during this season of Advent. Uh, Today's reading comes from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 3 through 5. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and experience of the word today. A voice is crying out, clear the Lord's way in the desert. Make a level highway in the wilderness for our God. Every valley will be raised up, and every mountain and hill will be flattened. Uneven ground will become level, and rough terrain a valley plain. The Lord's glory will appear, and all humanity will see it together. The Lord's mouth has commanded it. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. 
Amen. Friends, the sparrows are coming forward, which means it's time for us to stand and sing. Woohoo! <laughs>
to babe on bended knee, Savior of humanity. Unto us a child is born, he shall reign Today is the third Sunday of Advent. This is Joy Sunday, and um, it's it's not it shouldn't be lost on you. And we'll talk about this here in a few minutes. But it shouldn't be lost on you that um, the word of joy uh, comes to us from the Old Testament prophets, and um, which presents itself as kind of a challenge to us, uh, the work that we have to do in order to maybe discover that joy and uh, the places that we need to travel in order to do that. So uh, in order to set the groundwork for that, uh, Steve and Lainey are going to come and light our Advent candles this morning. And today's candle of joy. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Today we remember the prophets of old who demanded to be heard, who dared to speak of a child to come unexpected liberator of the people, vulnerable, 
incarnation of the holiest of holies, a new name for God. future we never anticipate. On this third Sunday of Advent, we light this candle as a symbol of the prophets who renew our faith and remind us of what may be. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lainey. So this morning's gospel lesson comes to us uh, out of Luke's gospel. And uh, we have, uh, um, you, as you know, we go through a cycle of folks who read for us on a regular basis. The first Sunday of the month is uh, Julie. The second Sunday is Vicki. Uh, the fourth Sunday is Barbara Smith. And the third Sunday is Maury Beck. And Richard and Beth have been filling in uh, for Maury while he was in the hospital. Uh, but this morning's reading comes to us from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. Please rise for the reading and hearing of God's word, Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. Jesus is born in Bethlehem, and it came to pass in those days that the church, please rise for the reading and hearing of God's word, Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. Jesus is born in Bethlehem, and it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. God bless you. <laughs> Thank you, Maury. <laughs> Is Maury on with us this morning, Turner? <laughs> good, good. So uh, the last couple of weeks, we've been making our way towards Bethlehem, towards this journey. Uh, we heard about, the, um, about Mary and Joseph in some detail the last couple of weeks, and how they were uh, pretty unlikely. We would never have chosen them to be the, uh, the mother and father of Jesus. Uh, they, weren't, um, they, they weren't qualified, as we might look at them. Uh, but God chose them, and their lives in first century Palestine were not easy. They were difficult and challenging. And so today we make the trip from Nazareth down to Bethlehem, and uh, the trip itself uh, is challenging. It was in those days. I was thinking about it this morning. Those of you who went on the, the adventure to the Holy Land back in the spring, I think the trip from Nazareth to Jerusalem for us was about three and a half, maybe four hours. And that probably included a lunch stop. Um, in those days, it probably would have taken them eight to ten days to make this trip. So imagine if this is an eight to ten day trip, that would be like us going cross country. Where are the pools? Can you go cross country in, in eight days? Of course you can, right? And that's about what it would be. You could drive cross country in eight to ten days. Uh, my mom always, uh, when they would travel, they don't do much traveling anymore, uh, but when they would travel, she would always pack uh, snacks, right, for a road trip. 
So if they were going from the Charlottesville area to the Richmond area to visit with us or visit with family, she'd pack snacks. Because you never know, in that hour and 15 minutes, somebody might get hungry. So there'd be nabs and peanuts and candy bars and bottles of water, uh, all for that hour trip. So imagine the preparation that Mary and Joseph made to travel eight to ten days, right? And, uh, and how difficult and challenging that trip would be. You can imagine if they, um, if they were riding on a donkey or walking or the combination thereof, uh, the roads were not paved. They were rocky paths uh, through, uh, at times, very hilly terrain. And as they made their way uh, from Jericho, up to Jericho, and then down from there to Jerusalem, uh, it, would have been, um, it would have been a challenging journey for them to make, uh, especially if one was uh, nine months pregnant, right? Hmm. I don't even know that to say it was difficult or challenging really does it justice. But we know about difficult journeys, don't we? And I don't mean the cross-country trip in an antique Ford Falcon. I'm talking about difficult journeys that we experience in life, uh, such as, I mean, we know very well in this, in this community of faith, uh, the deaths of loved ones, right? The journey through uh, treatment for cancer, in which the treatments are as harsh as the disease that it's fighting. That's difficult, and that's challenging. We know about challenging relationships. You got teenagers, Mike Sawyer? Challenging relationships, right? But also with our spouses and significant others, parents kids, work relationships that can be challenging. Things like uh, diets, battling addictions, depression, grief, all of these things are difficult and challenging aspects of life that we face in different seasons. And we often talk about them as if, um, and well, I think maybe, maybe it's just our nature. Uh, maybe it's just our nature and our culture and our society that we think in terms of destinations, right? We think in terms of completion, uh, the completion of the treatments and cancer that goes into remission or being cancer-free. We think about relationships that end in divorce or marriage or uh, independence uh, as kids grow older, for example, uh, and being able to maintain independence for uh, aging parents. We think about arrivals, getting to the end of the challenge, the end of the difficulty, the end of the life journey that we're going through. But the interesting thing is that when we complete the journey, we start another one, don't we? When we complete a particular journey of difficulty or challenge, we begin another one. Another journey that is based on having made it through the first one and a door opens into a new life that may be different or transformed or um, in some way has been shaped by the journey that we've been through and completed. So what if the destination isn't really the point? What if the real point of it all is the journey itself? What if the point is not going to heaven when you die, but the life that you live to get to that place, right? What if, as we talked about yesterday with Danny, as we did with Ann um, several months ago, it's about the dash. The poem that was read at yesterday's um, uh, celebration of life for Danny Mazel uh, was entitled The Dash. And Paul Willis, um, Lori's brother, read the poem. And uh, it talks about the beginning date, right? Your date of birth. And the ending date, your date of death. But what really matters is what's in between, the dash.
between those two dates. So what if the point of our Christian journey and our life experience isn't the destination, it's not the completion, it's not the end point that we attain or obtain, but it's the journey itself is what really matters. It's the experience of having gone through the, the process, gone through the challenge, gone through the difficulty. And when you think about that from a, a, a Christian perspective, a discipleship perspective, to me, it seems to make sense. Because, see, faith is required not for the destination. Faith isn't required for the destination. When you get there, you see it. What did Paul say? Hope is what we can't see. It's the unseen. So we have hope in the unseen. It's the faith that gets us on the journey or through the journey that gets us to that end point. But we don't need faith when we get to the end. We don't need faith at the destination. We need faith for the journey. And I think today, when we hear the voice of the prophets and the prophets speaking and talking, and talking about joy, that's where we discover the joy, is in the journey, live with faith and live by faith. Because see, joy is not happiness. Don't, don't confuse the two, right? Joy is something deeper. Joy is finding um, meaning. Joy is discovery of a deep presence that even in the midst of the fight against cancer, the fight of a of, of loved one dying and the fight and, and the struggle and the challenge in grieving, or in a lost relationship, the joy is discovered in recognizing and realizing that we walk with Christ and Christ walks with us. In the Psalms, we hear all the time the lament Psalms. Those are Julie's favorite. She loves the lament Psalms. And the folks in the Sojourners class know that I'm not being, I'm being sarcastic. That's what I'm doing. I'm being sarcastic. Um, <laughs> in the lament Psalms, they almost always, always turn to a point of acknowledging the presence of God in the midst of the grief and the struggle and the challenge. They talk about the joy of knowing God in the midst of the difficulty. See, that's what joy is. Joy is that powerful presence that, of Christ when we realize that God is with us, Emmanuel. If you would, you might even go so far as to say this is what Christmas is really all about. God with us in the challenges, in the difficulties, and in the struggles, in the suffering. Christ with us in the suffering. And that's what gives us joy. That's where our hope is, lies is in that, that, that walk knowing that Jesus walks with us. Our faith is built and buoyed on knowing the Holy Spirit accompanies us. And we experience that deep joy in the midst of the struggles when we acknowledge that God is with us. Mm -hmm. That's the word for this morning. Thanks be to God. Amen? Amen. Let's sing a song, and then we're going to eat sausage biscuits.
Thank you, Maury Beck, for reading the scripture for us today, and thanks to all of you for being here on this uh, third Sunday of Advent. Mm. Friends, may joy and nothing less find you along the way, and may God's light, God's pure, unadulterated light of the world guide you and countless others all the way home. Go enjoy. Amen? Amen. Amen.